Good afternoon, everybody. I am Melvin Neats. I'm the chair of the ECIA Public Sector Committee, and I will be the moderator for the webinar this afternoon. Very warm well welcome to everybody on this webinar, which is on collaboration between internal and external audit in the European public sector. The ECIA and EURASI have collaborated in producing this webinar, which incidentally will be recorded for future reference. The subject of collaboration between internal audit and external audit is a subject very dear to me. Initially in my career, I was an accountant and I did get frustrated at times when both sets of auditors visited the office asking me the same sorts of questions. Later on in my career, when I was the chair of an audit, various audit committees, again, I wanted internal audit and external audit to work closely together because I was getting a, so I was getting an overall assurance opinion. So it's a subject very dear to my heart. Well, without more ado, let me introduce you to the speakers. Firstly, we have Sylvia from Latvia, who is the head of strategy and development. And we have Soledad, who's the internal audit director at Canal de Isabel, based in Madrid, representing the ECIA. We also behind the scenes have Pascal, who will be, if you like, coordinating all the technical behind the scenes activity and explaining some of the technicalities to you. So without more ado, I think we'll press on with the first part of the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. We will use today Slido to raise questions, but also to get some input from you. So please uh, read this barcode or go to Slido on your browser and use the password that is here on the screen. Thank you and enjoy this webinar. Thank you, Pascal. So let's talk a little bit about the background to the cooperation. EURASI and ECI, we've got a lot in common. Whilst we've all got specific roles to play, we're both very interested in improving governance across the European public sector. As part of this collaboration, we jointly decide on various projects that we can work on. And this goes way back to when Belgium were really the coordinators for ECIA, where we worked on a number of projects as well as putting the basics of our current uh, collaboration together. So our goal was our common language to understand each other's roles, to share knowledge, to share best practice. And how we do this is to share initiatives, talk to each other and exchange information. To give you an example of some of these projects, um, first of all, with Belgium, we did a, a project a long time ago, it seems now, on coordination between size and internal auditors. We also compared each other, things like our standards, how we work. And we also produced a publication, audit committees in the European public sector, and very much the paper concluded we were strong advocates of audit committees in the European public sector. Then we moved on to the Netherlands with the coordinators from size point of view, and we produced a paper on non-financial and integrated reporting in the public sector. Next slide, please. So, now uh, our cooperation with Latvia, which is what we're talking about today. Coordination, the role of internal audit and external auditor. So we're talking about different forms of cooperation. We're talking about how we both provide assurance. We're talking about how we can collaborate, what more different models, approaches apply, and certainly trying to find out best practices so we can spread the word across the patch. To do this work, we use as the base for our information surveys. 
for this particular project, we've sent out a similar survey to various nations to find out to the extent to which cooperation exists. Eurosci have got a similar survey but with slight differences to cover more SI specific topics. These won't be covered today in the presentation or maybe touched upon, I guess. So, how we do this, we collect data from a wide sample of countries across Europe. And there's a map later on which will show you the response coverage. There's a bit of technicalities there. So if similar questions are compared, we try and draw parallels, try and find out why there are differences, try and get some consistency in the data that we're using. But we can certainly identify opportunities for improvement by comparing the results from each of the countries. So that's the background. So let's move on to the results. And I'll ask Soledad here to really talk about what the first results and conclusions have been from the survey. So over to you, Soledad. Thank you, Melvin. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, we have this objective. The objective of the survey was to analyze the cooperation and the relationship between internal audit departments and the supreme audit institution in each country. We sent uh, this survey and we received a lot of answers. We received uh, more than 130 answers by 24 countries. So thank you very much for your participation because we, we know that some of the attendees of this webinar uh, answered this, this uh, survey. Here we have the contact people. Maybe you are part of this group of people. Uh, we have one person in this country that helps with this project, this project that collaborates between Eurosci and ECIIA. Here you can see all the contact people that we have in ECIIA. These uh, uh, people help us with the surveys, with the best practices, with the relationships. So thank you very much. And this is all the uh, answers that we received more than Oh, sorry, 24 countries with more than 130 uh, answers. And I want to say especially thanks to Croatia, Sweden and Serbia because we, we received a lot of information. And this is a huge information and we have uh, answers by public enterprises, agencies and ministry, you can see here. In green, you can see the, 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 uh, the, the answer that we have from these countries and in yellow that we don't have this uh, information. So thank you very much for all this uh, important information. And after we're going to analyze all the results and it's important that the questions sometimes in some of the, of the questions are different results within a single country because we sent this survey per country and we receive the answer for the uh, different Institute of Internal Audit. Uh, thank you, Soledad. So if we compare the results of this survey with other previous surveys, um, can you take anything from that? Yes, of course. This is one of the questions that we sent in this survey. Does we did have any contact with the National Supreme Out Institution? And we received that the half of the countries answer yes, no, 13 countries answer yes, you can see in green in the, in the map, and the other half answer no or inconclusive, no. This is really important because we want to improve this percentage and maybe in the next slide. Yes, thank you. This is according to your question, Melvin. In 2014, in our cooperation with uh, the Belgian side, as Melvin said, we have uh, this important paper. No, it's about the cooperation and cooperation between the Supreme Audit Institution and the internal audit in the public sector. And we had in this this other survey this question: Does the internal audit department and the side have contact? In this case, we received the or we focus on six countries: Portugal, Spain, Austria, Norway, uh, Serbia, and Germany. And in this case, 88% of the departments answer yes. So maybe we can compare, but it's not exactly the same uh, focus on the on the survey. Thank you, Sondad. I mean, what, what other conclusions do you draw from the survey? Yeah, this is another important question that we sent in the survey. Does the site use the work of your internal audit department for the audits? This is really important for us that the site use our work. 
And after we're going to compare this question with our colleagues from ECIA that have, uh, have a similar question, and we're going to compress, and maybe you are going to be surprised. In this case, from uh, ECIA, 41% uh, of the countries answer yes, that the internal audit departments think that the site use their work. Only the 41% of the, of the countries answer yes. We, we need to improve this, this percentage, of course, because it's a very good practice and it's very, it could be very good for us that the site use our work. And in this case, we have uh, this same question for the other survey that we have in 2014. So we have in the next slide. Sorry, we have another another reform. That internal department, yeah, sorry, we have we have before, but that internal department, yes, you uh, use the internal department work. In this case, in 2014, the, the answer was that only 38% of the countries answered yes. So if we can compare 2014 for now, we increase a little this percentage, so good news, but we need to continue to uh, increase this percentage. And after we're going to compare this result with EuroSci result. Thank you, Soledad. I think at this stage, we're going to try and involve the participants with our first uh, Slido test. So the first question, and this is to be answered by the internal auditors in the audience. Does the internal audit department cooperate with their SI? Could people please um, reply? OK, so we have we have about two thirds definitely yes, 20 percent ish no and about 13. Oh, it's moving quite fast. Yeah. So we've got about two thirds saying yes and the rest are split between don't know and uh, no. Can we uh, move on to the next slide, Pascal? And this is for the size to answer now. Does your side cooperate with internal audit departments? OK. To be honest, the yes is a very similar. They're within a percentage of each and the don't knows and knows more don't knows on the soy side, but very similar. Um, Soledad. And still, first of all, Soledad, have you any comment on those results? Are they surprise you? Yeah, it's good. No, the, this this uh, the results are similar from the size and from the internal department, so it's good. In this case, all the attendees have the same feeling. Uh, and if we compare the result with the with this with the survey, in the case of our survey, only 45 percent of the countries, in the case of the internal audit, answered yes. So after you now know, is this increase a little, and it's really good. This uh, this percentage that is better, of course, we, we want to improve this collaboration and the size and the internal cooperate. Thank you. Sylvia, would you like to comment, particularly on the SOI responses? Yeah, in, I agree with uh, Soledad that it's uh, great to see uh, positive uh, responses in terms of uh, this uh, collaboration. Um, it's interesting that we have maybe a bit uh, lower percent as far as the size uh, so we had a as per, as per the survey we had a more uh, maybe more higher percentage of those who replied that uh, they do cooperate uh, with the internal auditors but here maybe it's a positive thing that it means that uh, we have in this uh, 
in this fora here, we've uh, managed to attract uh, those uh, sides maybe that don't cooperate and who maybe are looking at this uh, opportunity to be here in this uh, in this forum uh, to be able to find out what are the ways that this co collaboration can can occur. So I think it's yeah I agree with Soledad that it's a positive uh, positive response that we see here. Thank you, Sylvia. I mean, I think it's good that the yeses are pretty well the same for both uh, parties. So uh, we've got some consistency uh, here. OK, we'll now move on to uh, Sylvia. Can I ask you what the results and conclusions were from the Euro side survey, please? Yeah, thank you so much, Melvin. So um, in regards to our survey results, then we will uh, move on to discuss those. Um, so just as an introduction, perhaps, for those who may may not know that EUROSI is one of the regional organizations of the International Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions. And uh, EUROSI was established in 1990 and current our current membership uh, amounts to 51 members. In terms of um, of our organization, um, it EuroSci offers its members a platform where uh, we promote and develop cooperation among SIs and EuroSci. And we have established networks, different working groups and project groups. And through these sides also develop relations to exchange experiences. And this can be both multilaterally and bilaterally as well. The aim is to respond flexibly to the challenges of emerging issues and to seek appropriate responses to provide added value to our members and to the citizens of each country. And um, if we look at the strategic plan um, that we have for this current period up until 2024, as you will see on the slide, we have two strategic goals. And uh, SAI Latvia, um, um, is responsible for EuroSci governance portfolio on relations with non-SAI stakeholders. And this cooperation between EuroSci and EKIA is implemented as part of this portfolio, which contributes towards uh, the EuroSci objective to facilitate and support needs-driven institutional capacity development initiatives. Um, together with the International Auditors uh, Confederation, we aim to facilitate common language and understanding to improve collaboration between internal and external auditors on the EuroSci level. We can move ahead with the slide. So here you can see the um, objective that this particular activity uh, falls under. And we can move on to the next slide to discuss um, to what uh, what we were looking at or what the aim of the survey was for on on the side of EuroSci. So we wanted to understand, gain information on size cooperation with internal auditors. Um, so the key experience which our questionnaire tried to capture was the different forms and approaches applied by size, the role of internal auditors in providing assurance to audited ent entities and collecting information on the mechanisms used by our size in collaboration with internal auditors. Um, in terms of the scale of participation, uh, which is, uh, yes, uh, thank you. The survey was sent out to 49 EuroSci members and the European Court of Auditors. Um, this was done in June of last year um, and done in parallel with the, um, with the um, uh, uh, survey that was sent out to the members of the inter uh, internal auditors. And as you can see by on this slide, we had a very uh, good response. 28 SIs and the uh, European Court of Auditors responded to the EuroSci survey. So it shows a good response rate. In terms of our uh, coordination cooperation, both formal and informal, the majority of respondents, so 25, indicated that they have cooperation coordination with internal auditors. Um, the one that is listed as other is uh, um, the European Court of Auditors, which is the EU institution. Um, and it consists first and foremost of the European Commission and other EU institutions. In terms of no um, answers, that um, this, uh, this, there, there are three, um, as you see, size 
um, that have responded in such a way. And these particular sides in responding on this issue stressed independence of the institutions and the fact that this coordination with internal auditors is not the prime focus of their work. Um, in terms of the basis for the mode of coordination and cooperation. So as we see here, um, there are um, the very large majority of, uh, or 21 size, including then also the European Court of Auditors, so 22 responses in total, um, responded that the SAI used the work of internal auditors using the guidance outlined in the principles of ISA uh, 610, which is using the work of internal auditors. Less than half of these respondents state that they have explicit written SAI internal rules, such as auditing manuals and etc., cetera, um, for the, how they uh, conduct work. Um, only a few SAI state that uh, they have national auditing standards regarding the coordination cooperation with uh, internal auditors. Um, in terms of the basis for the mode of coordination cooperation between um, our SAI, our size and the international auditors in the particular country, we see that the majority of size have more than one basis for coordination cooperation. So we think that this is a very positive uh, aspect that there are different modes and each size looks in the country what is the most appropriate for, for them in terms of uh, cooperation and coordination. And in terms of uh, the um, results as far as the areas for coordination cooperation um, in the next slide. Uh, here you can see the most uh, popular answers ranging from internal uh, control framework with 21 responses using this and, uh, and uh, also documenting audited entity system and operational processes which is used by 14 size. Um, in terms of management of risks and coordination cooperation with um, international auditors, we had, I think, um, quite a few examples of management of risks and coordination cooperation. As size main concern in collaboration with partners, this is regardless of what the partners are in their countries, but the main focus and concern um, is the maintenance of independence. And that's why um, this particular issue is looked at and the number of uh, these listed here are to ensure this independence and objectivity um, and to make sure it is maintained also in relation to communication and cooperation with internal auditors. So that's those that's the summation of uh, of our our uh, survey, and uh, we think it shows very positively uh, the different uh, ways uh, that we cooperate and further looking at cooperation also in the future. Thank you very much, Sylvia. At this stage, then we're going to ask another couple of questions using Slido just to see how that compares with our results from the survey. So the first question. Does SAI use the internal audit work? And this is the viewpoint from internal auditors, please. So could internal auditors uh, reply? Thank you. So we have about uh, 60 percent, just under 60 percent now. Um, 27 percent don't know. Uh, the yeses are going down, but we'll say just under 60 uh, percent. Thank you for those uh, responses. Could we have the next uh, slide? Oh, um, and this is from the size point of view for the size to answer, please. Do you use internal audit work?
Okay, looks like we've got a, a much higher yes there. So uh, the initial conclusion is that the size, from the size point of view, they use internal audits work more than the internal auditors think they do. But anyway, um, would you like to comment on that, uh, Soledad? Yes, thank you, Melvin. Yeah, now the, the, the answers of our attendees are similar of our survey that now we are going to compare both results from EuroCIA and ECIA and are similar are these no this more or less 55 57 of the internal audit answer yes that the site usually work but around 20 percent of the of the internal audit department answer no this is one of the percentage that we want to increase and Maybe after we are going to speak about this, no, Melvin, about the, the, the this perception of the use of our work of internal audit. Yeah, have you any? Um, can I ask you, have you any thoughts on why this difference of percentages uh, might occur? Maybe we have different perspective of the same situation, and uh, maybe the size with this answer they use our work more than we think. Uh, it's because maybe we don't receive any feedback. We share our reports, we share our uh, strategic plan, and maybe the size, the size use this work, but maybe we don't know. So maybe this is the different perspective of the same situation. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Would you like to comment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think uh, yeah, I agree uh, with Solida that we have. Uh, Perhaps different interpretations also in terms of the, the what what means use of work, and uh, and the opportunities and the the modes of uh, of co cooperation collaboration as was seen from the Eurosci survey are quite diverse. Um, I think another another issue uh, um, or aspect that could be possibly explained is that um, each country uh, has only one SI. So, you know, some countries maybe have regional uh, branches of the institution, but only one SI. Uh, but internal auditors um, are quite diverse in, in terms of uh, um, in various uh, different levels uh, in the country, which means that uh, the SAI um, can use, say, one of these uh, sources of, uh, in terms of internal auditors, which another source of inter internal auditor in the same country, maybe that work is not used. So I think that it's, it's also this aspect where a SAI counts used internal auditors work um, in terms of uh, using it in any form through any of the different levels that exist in the country, whereas maybe the internal auditor, um, you know, only knows that perspective that, that applies to their particular work. So I think that also could uh, could be uh, one of the issues. And of course, um, you know, the size uh, there, you know, we we are quite, uh, you know, quite, um, let's say, um, you know, careful in, in ensuring that uh, we, uh, you know, follow these in independence and this obj objectivity uh, stance. So um, it could be that, uh, you know, internal auditors, uh, as Solidad says, don't even know or don't have this uh, this feedback loop as far as how, how the work is used and, and in what, what uh, circumstances. So, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Well, We've got over um, some conclusions and findings of both of the EuroSci survey and the ECIA survey. Uh, the next stage of the webinar is to really to draw some comparisons between the two. So can I begin, Soledad, by asking you what the results and your conclusions are about the comparison of the survey, please? Yes, thank you, Melvin. Here you can see the participants in both survey. You can see in the, in the map too, and you have the list. We have one, uh, 21 countries that answer both surveys. So, as uh, Sylvia said before, is is a is a really important information. We have a complete view of the situation in Europe, and here you have all the the survey from both ECIA or Eurosci. In next slide. We can see the, the answer that we sent. We have two different surveys, are not exactly the same, similar, but not exactly the same. In ECIA, we decided to have a short survey, 
only 12 questions because we want to not to, to, to receive a lot of answers. In this case, more than 130 participants. And this is some of the most important questions you can see in bold. That the question that we have in ECI survey and in Eurosci, no, the same topics, no, the contact, the use of this work, this cooperation, good practices, benefits and obstacles. And, and you can see the same with Eurosci uh, survey. Next slide. We can compare the result of some of these questions. Here, that we spoke about this specific with the slide of answer. Does the internal audit department cooperate with the SAI? And similar with the SAI, no? We have this, this situation again that the, in ECIAA, the answer yes are around. No, 54 percentage of the countries, and no, in the case of Euro size 86. So the feeling again of the internal department is that we cooperate with the SAI, but maybe we, we can increase this percentage. But you, uh, the SAI feels that they cooperate more than uh, that we thought. Uh, okay, we 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 are going to improve, or we want to improve this percentage. Are not bad um, conclusion, but maybe these eight countries that they answer no. In the case of ECIA, we, we can focus on that and we, to, we try to improve this relationship between both uh, organizations. Yeah, this, this coincides with what we said previously about the perceptions, I think. But again, analysis, we're assuming that it's perception, but I guess further analysis might, might find some other reasons, but uh, that's work still to be done, I think. Yeah, maybe um, here you can, you can see the same the, the answer that we received uh, in the country that we received the same uh, no, uh, uh, answer, no, with yes or no from both surveys. And if we compare again with the survey from 2014, we increase this percentage. So good news. Thank you. Sylvia, can I ask for your views, please, on the results and conclusions by virtue of the comparison? Yeah, no, I, I can only stress uh, the same that uh, Soledad already mentioned uh, in terms of this, uh, is that um, that uh, a lot of countries have these internal audit departments that cooperate with size, which is, uh, um, you know, the results of the different surveys are consistent, which reinforces uh, the work carried out and the validity of this data. And, um, you know, as uh, um, Solid had already uh, mentioned, I think it's very positive that the percentage of uh, respondents who noted that they cooperate um, has increased uh, from the previous survey that was conducted by um, uh, the Confederation of Internal Auditors in 2014, which shows a positive trend. And for for us, I think, you know, uh, from the perspective of size, um, the response has been high uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the consistency of the results shows uh, that uh, there is interest and uh, and that uh, definitely um, there's also room for sharing different uh, different uh, um, ideas on the collaboration also further. Okay, thank you very much. Could I always ask you, Sylvia, also to ask about Bearing in mind the comparisons here, what what the, what is the basis for modes of coordination and cooperation between the two, between Eurosci and ECIA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the principles and modes of cooperation and coordination differ, um, but the most uh, widely spread that, that we um, see as we look at uh, um, the situation are the informal modes. So many and many uh, sides use more than one mode. Um, you know, I think that that's a very positive, uh, you know, tendency trend um, because it shows that we're looking at, um, you know, um, what is the most appropriate uh, for the side in particular or for the particular uh, circumstance, which can be different um, from audit to audit. So I think that this, is, this shows that um, there is a flexibility here um, and that there is kind of a diversity in using uh, different modes of cooperation. Yeah, thank you. Any comments from you, Soledad? Yes, in this in this case, we can see this percentage now that the, the SAI use the work of internal auditors, 44% uh, answer yes. In, in our attendees, five minutes ago, uh, 
55% of the answered answer yes. So we have similar, and I want to focus on this legula, le legally regulated contact. So only eight countries have this uh, relationship regulated by the law. So we, we can improve this with this law. And uh, in, the, in the other slide, that is OK, don't worry, we have entity audited by the side. 60% of the countries answer yes. So there are part of the countries, the entities that they answer no. And maybe this is the, 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 the explanation why uh, we answer that the SAI doesn't use our work or the SAI uh, don't have collaboration with us because maybe in some entities or, or public entities, um, uh, the SAI uh, uh, doesn't uh, audit this this kind of of uh, public entities. Thank you, thank you. Do, can you just go back to the go back to the previous slide on uh, modes of coordination? Um, we know the side comply with ISA six one zero, but of course, on the internal audit side, in the professional standards, uh, chief auditors, chief audit executives are required to coordinate their activity with other providers of assurance, which includes uh, SAI. So there is a similar basis, I think, for internal auditors as there is for, for um, EuroSci. OK. So let's move on. Um, Sylvia, SAI uses the work of internal auditors. Can you comment a little bit more about this, please? Yeah, so um, I think it's a uh, it's a good response. Uh, we have quite a, uh, quite a um, green map here, <laughs> which is positive. Um, and there is a bit of a discrepancy, perhaps, uh, when we looked at the analysis of the uh, the um, you know data, and also I guess from our survey uh, that we had briefly in the Slido, that there is this discrepancy of the interpretation of what what each side sees at what constitutes the use of another one's work. So um, there is that discrepancy that we discussed uh, with the Slido question. And um, and like, um, as I mentioned, this could be slightly because of the um, importance uh, of size to uphold their independence and their objectivity. Um, in terms of the ISA 160, um, a majority of size state that they are guided by these principles. Um, and that, that's, I think, uh, reflected in, in the next slide more. Um, but uh, those that uh, reply um, no uh, does not necessarily mean that they do not use these principles. This may merely mean that they don't cite this specific um, ISA um, in their work. So there are, you know, as as reflected in the previous slides when we were showing the the Euro size survey results, um, some sides use internal rules, national auditing standards, and these uh, um, integrate the main elements of ISA 160, but they might not specifically uh, reference uh, this uh, standard. Thank you. Um, Right, can you say a little bit, we, we talked about modes of coordination and cooperation and we've got the results of both surveys. Would you like to say a little bit more about uh, that, please? Yeah, um, as we can see from this slide, the most popular mode for size is regular meetings. Um, so we see in the responses that there are uh, different kinds of annual meetings, uh, for instance, organized by size, uh, such as, for instance, Austria. Um, then we have, uh, you know, uh, Spain, which uses liaison officers from size with the state public internal audit service and internal control. Um, and then we see that um, on this slide, from the perspective of internal auditors, the most popular is information sharing, but which is good. We also see here that um, that it's also an interesting uh, mode of uh, cooperation coordination for size, because here we also have almost 50 percent of size which responded. And I think in, in general terms, if we look at this slide, it's very encouraging as it shows there are various modes applied. 
And um, this is really a good basis upon which we can further um, look at cooperation that we can build and also share experiences, as we said, that this is one of the intentions of the survey and, and the work, for instance, of Eurosci is to kind of have this, um, you know, this way and this platform where we can share our experiences, our the what the practices that we use, and and then gain gain from that in the applications of of uh, these different modes in in our respective countries. Thank you, thank you, Sylvia. I mean, it's, it's very interesting because um, we years ago when I was director of audit for UK's HMRC, which is the tax uh, authority. Certainly, in my terms of reference. I had a, a clause which said I had access to everything, all documents pertaining to HMRC. And I know that the National Audit Office, who were the SI, had similar documentation that they had access to everything. So that's a pretty good basis, I guess, for exchanging reports, plans and the rest of it. But I don't know whether that's um, unique to the UK or what I know I know it's the case in a number of other nations but that's an interesting thing to explore I guess okay Soledad you have an interesting slide to explain to us yes that's a slide this <laughs> yes with this image, image we want to summarize some of the conclusion huh, that we have with the survey <clears throat> We are looking at the same situation, EUROSAI and ECIIA, the internal audit departments and the size, and maybe we have different perspectives, no? It's six, X9, no? And maybe we need to know that the other side uh, see another number, no? And maybe this is important for us, no? To understand the situation and to understand the another uh, point of view. <laughs> maybe for this reason, we, I had in this two survey different answers no, about the use of the work of internal auditor, about this collaboration, and maybe this is the point that we need to, to look at this and to know that maybe we have different, different perspective, why and why we can improve and understand better the other side of this uh, role. Yeah, thank you. It goes back, I think, to our uh, earlier one of the one of the answers to the surveys of different perceptions, I think. Interestingly enough, Soledad, who says it's nine and who says it's six? Which one is your assign, which is ECIA? Do you know? <laughs> what do you think? It's the same. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a, I, I jest. OK, Sylvia, can you talk a little bit about the benefits of cooperation, please? Yes, certainly. But in res in response to your question about the six and nine, Melvin, I just <laughs> want to I just want to say, you know, it's, I think it's good if we that we don't have uh, um, you know uh, people uh, considering uh, our effectiveness in terms of audit here, listening in because they would because it's a number they would probably think, hmm, how can it be that <laughs> that one sees a six and one sees a nine, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's just be because of the way we look at numbers, right? So um, I'm sure there we see we usually see the same the same things uh, in uh, the accounting uh, that we look over. But um, yeah, so in terms of uh, in terms of this slide, I think uh, you know a very large majority of the responding uh, size, so 24 of the size and and ECA um, that responded in the survey point out that the that uh, that there is this cooperation coordination uh, between their sign internal auditors in the public sector and they also indicate that they've experienced benefits from it so i think that that is you know the purpose of cooperation the thing that drives us to continue to look for these forms should be benefits right because it should be beneficial both to us uh, to internal auditors and also as we you know, both have this uh, aspirations uh, to to improve the benefits to society, then, you know, then this is uh, obviously something that we should work together. So 21, uh, you know, uh, of size uh, and uh, the European Court of Auditors uh, mentioned the strengthening of the mutual ability to promote good governance and accountability practices. I think this is, you know, our one of our main goals. 
Um, 18 looked at reducing the likelihood of un unnecessary duplication of audit work. So this is this is one of the things that drives us as auditors. So the economy of the use of our of, of uh, you know our work. So the fact that we are looking at these unnecessary duplications of our work is is good uh, from that perspective of economy. And then also looking at more effective audits. So better understanding by both parties of the results. 19 size and uh, European Court, auditors, uh, Court of Auditors uh, responded in this way and better informed dialogue on the risks facing the organization. So this also was a response by 18 size and, and the European Court of Auditors. Um, and then also more efficient audits um, that are based on this uh, coordinated um, activity between our, our uh, internal and external audits and also refined audit, audit scope for size and internal auditors. So I think, you know, we had a really lot of uh, different um, benefits uh, that were that were uh, included. And I think that just shows that uh, there is uh, room um, for uh, for make for improvement of our work and, and working together so that we can benefit uh, both sides. Thank you very much for that, Sylvia. Can I just add Going back to with an audit committee hat on, of course, that's another benefit that you make uh, your audit committee happier if you can show that you've cooperated and coordinated with your work, I guess, or indeed the governing body through the audit committee. Interesting. OK, so I think at this stage. We've got another Slido. Exercise. And we're talking about you've, um, the audience. We've learned a lot about the various forms of collaboration, what happens, good practice. Now we're going to ask you really for your help. How would you promote the collaboration? Um, could you please give responses? And this time it's everyone, please, both internal auditors and uh, Eurosign members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, interesting results. Um, one result that's got a high score there is a professional exchange. Um, can I ask Soledad and Sylvia? Soledad first, if you'd like to comment on that one, please. Yeah, uh, it's, it's fantastic. I, I remind you that in, in the survey from ECIIA from the in the whole department information sharing is the is the first no uh, for us to, to promote this collaboration so you our attendings <laughs> uh, follow uh, this idea so for me it's really important no to information sharing use the same information and of course with regular meetings but information sharing is is we can promote because we can share information about best practices in our um, uh, different um, countries or in different no, internal audit or the side we can uh, information sharing about uh, how we work our audit plan about uh, uh, our strategic plan and yeah for me is really important too and i'm very happy that our attendees agree with this and agree with the ecia survey too and and what about um professional exchange where it shows 48 percent have you yeah, any for thoughts on that for me, it's really important too, no, and maybe it's, it's in connection with the training, no, because we can share, for example, in our Congress, we can uh, 
um, participate in the Congress of the size and the size or the uh, or the people of the size can participate in our Congress, for example. And I think this is really important, no? that that we are together and we you no, know, we 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 try to uh, focus on the perspective of the other side of our world, that is the our side in in the case of the internal departments. Thank you. Sylvia, can I ask you to comment, please? Hmm? Yeah, I, I I can only agree with Soledad, as we tend to do. Yeah. <laughs> agree. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I think, yeah, this is a positive response. Uh, information sharing is, uh, you know, the top response, because I think that that's also, you know, reflects uh, what has been done up until now. And uh, since Melvin, you also specifically highlighted the professional exchange. Yeah. I think, you know, we have uh, quite a lot of, um, you know, in the responses and in our analysis from from the size, we see that there are uh, various different um, approaches used by sides in this kind of uh, professional exchange. Some are a more maybe a regular form, um, you know, uh, as uh, Soledad mentioned, maybe paired with uh, training issues. And some are, you know, more um, on a like a needs basis. Uh, level. So, you know, this, this, uh, there are various examples that we can definitely extract from, from the analysis of the responses we have from size and to look at uh, how this can be, uh, you know, uh, the information on the, the use of this kind of uh, exchange could be uh, um, further implemented. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so we move on to what happens next. Um, what is going to happen next with this particular uh, project, the next steps? Uh, we are going to produce a document, a common document, which really summarises what you've heard today, plus other things. We'll, we'll be drawing out best practices, we'll be drawing out some conclusions, and we'll be drawing out our recommendations for the way forward. We are also organising an ECIA Eurosite event in October, on the 6th of October of this year, where representatives from both bodies will get together to debate uh, the document and other issues about uh, cooperation. So that is the way forward. So let's draw this to a conclusion. What are our conclusions? about this collaboration. If we show the next slide, please. So the conclusions, we've got two surveys. They are consistent. There are some differences of perception, but there's further work to be done. There are different points of view between both sides. But what I can say from the results is there seems an overwhelming benefit to closer cooperation, which far outweighs any hurdles or difficulties they might be. Now, I guess it's fair to say that we've got to recognise that internal audit has a different objective to um, the SI in a way, although they've both got an objective of providing and promoting improved governance across the European public sector. But we must mutually recognise that you've both got different roles to play. However, there is undoubted benefits in cooperation. We've seen the results, and where best practice, some of the best practices we've come across shows both sets of auditors work in a, a really uh, good level. It's a very worthwhile partnership. So we have five minutes left. Um, Thank you all for your questions and for your answers to some of the questions we posed rather. Now we've got an open session here and we've got five minutes to answer questions. I might add, if we don't manage to get through these uh, this afternoon, we will make sure you get a written response to your question uh, after the session. So here are some questions. What should internal audit do in countries where the Supreme Court may not collaborate my goodness this is a good question can i ask um sylvia to comment on this one first please um 
Yeah, what should what should internal auditors do? That's a good question. I mean, um, I, I I would have to say that I would have to uh, revert uh, to my colleagues uh, that are um, um, have these Supreme uh, Court uh, um, modes. Uh, Latvia, we don't have that, so so uh, no. so it's a different uh, different approach. And but I assume that uh, one one issue is just to maybe try to uh, to uh, um, have a meeting with uh, the Supreme Audit Institutions and to discuss. Uh, um, you know what what could be the modes of of uh, coordination or and some sort of cooperation maybe just explore um these options um uh, you know i think it, it it would be valuable maybe to uh, to know like specifically which uh, which uh, country we're discussing here but i think that you know um size are um definitely as i mentioned um careful in regards of independence and objectivity and uh, and as a as a court, it could be even more so. So you know there is a is amount of uh, of um, you know um, discretion here. But I think that you know you can always try to approach. And and uh, I think you know size uh, um, will communicate what their opportunities are and and how they perceive this issue. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. I, I guess the answer, my answer to this, would be well. We need to influence the Supreme Court when the, where, where this happens and get them to change their minds. But um, that's an easy answer, I guess. Um, some more questions. Uh, how do you interpret the meaning of use the work of internal audit? Is it maybe the reason for the differences in the surveys answered? Interesting questions. Holder, would you like to comment? Of course, thank you, Melvin. Yes, I think. Uh, maybe this is the, the, the key no, of these differences answers. If we are internal audit and the Supreme Audit Institution audit our company and we only send the maybe the reports and we don't have this feedback or we don't have this meeting or we uh, we don't have the opportunity to share with the side our ideas and to explain, no, not only to share the report, to explain the recommendation to explain our strategic plan. Maybe with this, we can feel that the, the site use our work. No, uh, Sylvia said that it's really important that they work with independence and objectivity, of course, and it's the same with internal auditor, but it's no problem to, to, to share or to listen the internal audit departments and to know more about what internal department think or what, what, uh, what is the work of internal department. And maybe with this, the, the the answer of the question, the side use the work of internal department is different because we feel that they use you know, this 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 work of us. Thank you, Sylvia. Would you like to comment on that one? Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know there is this different interpretation, um, and that definitely is an issue. I mean, in terms of the. Um, International standard of supreme audit, uh, audit institutions. There is, uh, there are two different approaches uh, that are defined in terms of using the work of internal auditors. So it's using the work um, that auditors have completed and obtaining the direct assistance of internal auditors. So even this uh, has two kind of ways, right? And so. Um, you know, one might perceive one or the other, might be using one or the other, and then, uh, and then that the perception in that in that sense uh, does change. Yeah. Yeah. Thank but you. I think this is this is something that you know is uh, um, in our exchange. It's we're just coming closer to understanding the different interpretations and uh, finding the the modes in each uh, country that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, well, we've come to the uh, end of our time. So it's uh, down to me to conclude. And I'd like to thank all the speakers um, for their very interesting presentations. And I'd like to thank all the people who've keyed in and given their answers to Slido. And I'd like to thank um, Pascal uh, for the technical support and Carolina for the technical support that they've given to this. Um, semi, um, webinar. Now, of course, this is an informative webinar. It doesn't stop here. You know the next steps.
So please keep in touch. If you've got any questions or anything to raise or any suggestions, please get in touch. And I think we've got a slide giving the um, addresses that you can contact. There we are for ECI and EUROSI. And I think that concludes this webinar. Once again, thanks to everyone for your participation. Till the next time. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you.